This is the Elite Tool. This is an interactive wheel on smart trainer with magnetic resistance system and connects wirelessly to your computer, phone, or tablet and automatically adjusts resistance to simulate a GPS course or a workout. The Tool features a compact design with aluminum resistance unit and legs made from beech wood and steel and it retails for 580 US dollars. What's up? This is Autark here from smartbytrainers.com. The Tool is the first wheel on smart trainer we've seen in a while. The first wheel on smart trainer review on this channel in a long time, and it is called wheel on because unlike direct drive trainers, you keep the wheel on when you attach your bike to the trainer and a roller grips to the rear wheel and apply resistance. And in this video, I'll talk about the specs, the setup process, power accuracy, noise, and my thoughts on this smart trainer. And if you find this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button to help support this channel and consider subscribing if you like to see more content like this. The tool is a compact, lightweight, and beautifully designed wheel on trainer. It looks more like a furniture piece that you can keep in your living room or office. And aside from the lightweight and compact design, some people find wheel on trainers to be easier to work with because you do not have to worry about removing the rear wheel and all the cassette installation. They also tend to be cheaper than direct drive trainer, but they also have their cons. They shred your bike tire and that is why it is recommended to use a dedicated tire for your trainer than the one that you use to ride outside. Uh, also, they are not as accurate, not as powerful, not the best at simulating courses, and they also tend to be louder. The tool can measure power up to 1300 watts within plus minus 5% accuracy, and it supports ANT plus FEC and Bluetooth FTMS wireless protocols. It is compatible with all major indoor bike training apps out there, including Zwift, Trainer Road, the Sufferface, RGT, and more. It can simulate gradients up to 10%, and this is where wheel on trainers usually fall short to direct drive trainer. As that resistance increase, it becomes harder for the roller to keep a grip on the tire. So you will experience a lot of tire slipping when sprinting and particularly climbing and getting out of the saddle. So if racing and climbing is what you like to do, then I would look into getting a direct drive trainer. Let's talk about setting this trainer up for a minute. I've assembled a number of wheel on trainer and the tool takes the award for the most difficult trainer to assemble. This is the manual. It is the most confusing assembly instruction you will probably ever read. And even if you try to read it and make sense of it, you will most likely get it wrong. So to save you time, I'm going to link to the elite assembly video watch it before you put this trainer together. And I've heard Elite is redoing the setup instructions, so you might get something different than this manual. Uh, but a couple of points to make things much easier and save you a lot of time. Flip the resistance unit upside down, attach the frame to the rear opening if you have a road bike or a tri bike, put this metal plate on top and tighten the screws. Put these rubber pieces on both ends and screw them tight. Once done, move the unit upright and tighten this knob. Move the resistance unit all the way back by rotating the knob anti-clockwise until it stops moving. Now you want to fix your bike onto the unit. Make sure this handle is up. Center your rear wheel onto the roller and adjust the attachment unit by rotating these rings until there is enough space for your bike. Bring down the lever and it should start applying resistance to the quick release somewhere after the halfway point and you should feel some resistance and the bike should feel secured now. Uh, once the bike is secured, move the resistance unit forward until the roller touches the wheel. Then lock the resistance unit by moving this lever and that is it. Now you are ready to ride. Uh, a couple of things you should do before you start using the trainer. Make sure you have the latest firmware update. You can do that by using the Elite Upgrade app. If there's a new firmware available, it should prompt you to install it. You'll also want to calibrate the trainer. You can do that by using a separate app, which is called My eTraining, and you can find the calibration under settings, pair your trainer, and then tap on trainer calibration. And for best results, make sure to warm up the trainer for about 10 minutes or so before you initiate the calibration. You can also calibrate it within Zwift, which is what I would do if you plan on using Get with Zwift, for example. Wheel on trainer require a lot more frequent calibration than direct drive trainers. 
Uh, tire pressure can make a big difference in accuracy and as long as you keep the tire pressure the same, then power measurement should be consistent. But because the tire pressure vary a lot from ride to ride and the roller resistance also against the tire can vary as well, it is recommended to calibrate the trainer more often. Okay, let's talk about accuracy. Elite claims the tool is accurate within plus minus 5% and during my tests in free riding on Zwift, I found the tool to be extremely good and even exceeded my expectations and exceeded Elite's own power accuracy claims. Uh, in free riding, there isn't really much to pick at. It was very close to my Asioma pedals. It can vary in power here and there, particularly during sprints, but nothing too bad. In erg mode, same thing. Power measurement was within the accuracy range. Cadence speed did not have an effect on power measurement also flywheel speed or gear selection did not have an effect on power measurement. The tool can be a little slow to respond to changes for workout intervals. So for example, in these short intervals, it took the tool about four to five seconds to go from 100 watts to about 350 watts. So it is best to keep a small or a medium gear when in erg mode. This is also typical of any low to medium range trainer. You might have a wattage floor issue when in a bigger gear. So if you find the trainer struggle to get you down to very low watts when in erg mode, just go to an easier gear and that should remediate that issue for you. In a smaller gear, the tool hit the prescribed target in Zwift. When going to a bigger gear, it was three watts lower. Going to the biggest gear, it came in nine watts lower than my prescribed target watts. So it did struggle a little bit in a bigger gear. Uh, one issue I ran into in trainer road is when going to a bigger gear in erg mode, and I'm talking about 5317 or somewhere around that, so not too big of a gear, trainer road disconnected the trainer all together, and I had to repair it. I did not experience this issue using Zwift, so this seemed to be a trainer road issue. Other than that, like I said, it was super good on power measurement and I was really impressed. The tool also measure and broadcast cadence and it's pretty decent. Some discrepancies here and there, but nothing really major. Uh, as for noise, Elite says the tool is quiet, but is it really quiet? Here's how loud the trainer is. Not too terrible, the problem with wheel on trainer is you have the rear tire attached to a roller and that will generate noise and vibration. So it's not terrible for a house, but if you live in an apartment and worry about that noise traveling down to your neighbors, I would avoid getting any wheel on trainer altogether and just stick with a direct drive trainer that is quiet. Okay, I think Elite nailed it with the tool. The design looks good. I do not know how many of you will buy it because of how it looks, but it's the best looking wheel on trainer you will find. The road feel on this trainer is really good too. And the accuracy honestly is better than I expected. Good job late on that. Responsiveness in erg mode was decent for a $580 trainer. So if a wheel on trainer is what you are after, the elite tool is really one to consider for sure, just for the accuracy and the road feel alone. Okay, if you are looking for this trainer, make sure to check out the Smart Bike Trainer Tracker on smartbiketrainers.com to see where you can find one and the best available price. Okay, let me know if you have any question. I would love to know what you guys think. There you have it. Take a second to like this video if you got anything useful out of it. And if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.